just kidding. <laughs> you can't do it. You gotta have a framework. You gotta have a foundation. It creates multiplication. <laughs> Hector Lamarck said, you are the master copy, right? What does that mean? What did he mean by when he said that in the audio? That you gotta get as good as you can possibly be because everyone's copying you. Right, so and he'd say, right, like if you have a Xerox copy and it, it comes out and it's perfect, bold lines, easily legible, but every time you make a copy, right, it's off the side a little bit, it's faded, and by the 10th time, so you're the best copy. He, I, he was famous for saying this. I used to love it. He'd always talk about this. Or maybe he didn't always talk about it. I used to listen to that audio the same over and over again. But he said, look, you're the master copy. That's where we got that phrase. You're the master copy. So everybody's going to be a variation of you, and it's going to be a diluted version of you. Your energy level, your attitude, your level of commitment. So if you're already faded, what do they think? It's blank. Without the system, confusion, frustration, chaos, conflict, uncoachability, discouragement, quitting. And remember, I, I want everybody to understand this, right? Because you know some of you guys are getting into the recruiting game, which is great. Don't, don't confuse quitting with not even getting started. Okay? This person quit. No, they didn't quit. They didn't start. That's a whole different thing. We have people that quit. Some people quit. They're licensed, they've been here, they've got a check, they quit. And that's a quit. Some people, though, they don't even start. That doesn't count. Now, I want you to understand our meetings and our trainings and all this stuff, I, you know, I, I'm being conservative in some of these numbers. It's a product of thousands of people's efforts. We've got thousands of people come through this office, this team. Decades of accumulated experience. Thousands of mistakes. It has consistently proven to be effective and has produced great success. But I want you to understand, no system is perfect. I understand that. Especially when dealing with people. <laughs> Right? We deal with people. But my advice to you is be a student of the business, okay? So the meetings are a farm system. Yeah, that's what they are. That's what this is. It's training camp. What do we identify about people with meetings? This is, these are some of the things, right? You can, you can write down your own. Consistency, high energy, punctual, credibility. Who can bring people? What do those people say about them when they come? I'm gonna show up, do they show up, right? It's credibility. People skills, right? Some people, they come to the meeting, you don't want them at the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> they just drain you, they're negative. They say what's on their mind, some of them don't talk, they just make noises. <laughs> <laughs> Like if I if I talk to Smear or me, right, like a lot of people in the meeting, you know how much we have to tolerate on a daily basis? You know, like and some people say this to me, like they'll be like, damn. You know, and, and there are people that have many more children than me. Like we have four kids, it's a lot. You know, I I I run me as 25 around hundred people. You, kids are kids and it's tough. Don't be wrong, but I have hundreds of people showing up. Hundreds of Religious backgrounds, political views, marriage issues, financial issues. You know how much stuff I've tolerated in 20 years of being here? Your head would explode if we told you all the things that we have to go through. And I'm not saying it like pat me on the back. I'm just saying that's what we get paid to do. We tolerate it. Levels of commitment. Habit changing. Right? I love it. I love when I see people that come in and get a haircut. They come in, they look nice. They come in and they have a notebook. They come in and they have a book. Oh, when I come in, they, in the parking lot, they're listening to an audio. A habit has changed. Inspiration, leadership. So, 
You know, there's gr another great book, right? Uh, I gotta get through this stuff pretty quickly. Uh, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, John Maxwell. One of the greatest books I've ever read. The first law, the first, is the law of the lid. Okay? And I'm not gonna go crazy in depth, but I do wanna do a quick exercise. And the law of list says leadership determines the level of effectiveness. Okay? So you have your level. And if I'm a level four, my organization, my team, my company, my department, whatever I'm supervising cannot be over four. The highest it can be is probably three. Four would be the max, but I've never even seen that. So... A leader is like a seven or higher. So if you are a four or five and you have three, you have followers. By definition, they can't grow your organization because they follow. They're not leaders. And I want you to do an exercise really quick. Okay. Write down. And, and I want you to shred this afterwards. I'm being serious. I don't want you to keep it, you know. Write down the directs you have. And write down, and then, like I said, on paper that you can throw away and tear up. Okay? Because it's a little personal here. Yeah. Write down what level of leadership they are. Ten would be like the pinnacle. Okay? The highest level of leadership. So write down your directs that you have. And write down what do you think, and you know, a leader. Are they independent? Are they, do they show up? Do they have a great attitude? Do they have high energy? Do they bring people? Do they bring clients? Do they make money? Do they follow instructions? All that stuff. Write down your directs that you have. And some of you, you know, it's a short list. Some of you may have a few more directs. Write down their level. And, and, I'm not saying you got to be critical, but be honest. Okay? They're not going to see it because you're going to rip it up. I'm being serious. I do not want you to show this to people. That's not the exercise. Ha ha, I didn't exercise. You're a one. <laughs> okay? That's not the point of this. Okay. Everybody done? Okay, take your top person, add one, that's you. Me. So you you got a bunch of ones on there, you're a two. You got a bunch of threes, you're a four. That's why I did that. That's okay. You can grow. That's the whole point of Maxwell. It's like these leadership laws can be learned. They can be studied. So, the power source is Saturday morning. Okay, now I'm going to kind of get into some of the things that we're going to do. All right. So, our power source and, and where we are in our business in 2024 of March and what we have what we're trying to do for our team and be there and be available is our power source will be Saturday morning, okay? And Samir has said this many times, and it's true, okay? And he's intentional in saying what he's saying. One of us will always be here, okay? And we will put on this meeting. Unless there's a company trip, we will have this Saturday meeting, okay? And like, like, it's a test. It's a test of how bad. I know, I, it sucks that it's Saturday. And when you grow your own name to 50, you can run it on whatever day you want. Okay, but right now, we run it on Saturday. How bad do you want it, right? How bad do you want to get free? How bad do you want a huge hierarchy and a big base? So we're going to do the op meeting. I will do the op meeting. Okay, I will close it down. So you'll have somebody with a lot of experience who I think is 
technically proficient at actually doing the meeting, do the meeting for you. You can bring people and people can bring people. And I will do it every week. You have 52, unless there's a day, you know, whatever snow days, you have 52 opportunities to bring people to the meeting. This is the largest weekly meeting we do as a group. And this is the, in our group, this is the single location that the most successful leaders show up. So I just want you to know, when you don't show up and your team doesn't show up, you are crippling them. You know, I asked the shield. I said, hey, man, you got a new guy. What do you think about Saturday? He said, man, he really liked what Samir said. And that's a very common compliment or response, right? Well, you don't get that if you don't come to Saturday. Samir said this a long time ago. Your ego lies in your meeting attendance. It's funny. We, we were very smart back then. We didn't even know it. <laughs> Now your ego lies in your income. Your income's great. And a lot of you guys have gotten your income up. Many of you. $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month, $30,000 a month, $40,000. But that's not, like, I, when I look at the builders, I say, man, I need to have 300 people showing up. That's what I think. I'm being serious. And the cheat code is Monday. This is the cheat code right here. Because what does that say? Can they show up during the week? Can they come here? I know a lot of people, they miss a day off all the time, man. <laughs> they work from home all the time. Go get their butt here. Because we don't want to ask them to show up. Do they have a deeper level of commitment? Are they going to be amenable to a more intense level of training? That's going to collapse the time frame. And this is the path to become full-time. Let me read something to you. I was showing this to Samir the other day. And this is a commercial real estate guy. Did I send it to you somewhere? What was it? Yeah. Okay, I found it. Very sternly. Okay. okay. So he was talking about the current climate of commercial real estate. Okay. We have a problem in real estate, in every sector of real estate, and not just office, because of the 500 basis of the, right, the office market has an existential crisis right now. It's a $3 trillion asset class that's probably worth $1.8 trillion. Now, there's $1.2 trillion of losses. There are buildings in New York that were bought for $200 million. The loan was $100 million, and it was only really worth $30 billion. Right? So he's talking about all this stuff. He's talking about towers and buildings being vacant. He goes, but there is a bright spot. The office situation is only completely a US phenomenon. I was just in Munich last week and rents in Munich are up 15%. The vacancy rate in Munich is 2% for class A. In Seoul, Korea, it's 1%. In Tokyo, it's 4%. Everyone's back to work except America. We've gone off the deep end. We don't show up for work. We don't apply for jobs. We don't feel like we have to go back to the office. Okay? One thing, right, that I heard a long time ago, Brett would always say this. He'd always say, when everybody, when everybody else is going one way, go the opposite. He'd always say that. This is our time to get our asses back in the office. I'm telling you right now. You can try to do it from home. What he said, they've fallen off the deep end completely. 
this is a time for you to course correct and avert. And I know it's hard. I know we have some step-by-step -step things to do. I'm not saying you got to go in here and, you know, be in here 12 hours a day. I'm not saying that. But be smart. Play the chess game. This is true. No one's going. I have people, they have been unemployed. and like, well, I'm trying to find some work for them. Get your ass a job <laughs> so you can pay your child support. Yes. Shut the up, man. Work from home. <laughs> what? Okay, fine. If you have the pick of the litter, man, you got like, and, and you know what people are doing, right? Like the, the aggressive people, they're getting two or three jobs because your ass is trying to find the perfect one. Path to become full-time, Monday. Full-time is the path to recruit full-timers, right? Part-timers don't recruit full-timers. Full-timers recruit full-timers. And a full-timer with full-timers goes RPD. Okay. Okay, so the power source is Saturday and Monday. Everybody following me? Yeah. Now, phase two of this, and this is something that we're doing, and I'm very excited about it, is you can open up your own local location. And we have a handful of those right now, right? We have Alexandria. We have Reston. We have Ashburn, we have DC, right? And you don't, you can kind of get an office and you don't have to really get an office. You know, we had to spend, we had to do a deposit. We had to get chairs, we had to get projectors. We had to get all this stuff. You don't have to do that, right? There's a, there, the, the new office, you know, whatever landscape is shared space like this office. Right? Coincidentally, we moved here in like 2019 or 20 or 18. And this is the new thing. And you can get a membership. How much is your, I mean, you, what's a membership? I know you have a dedicated office. What's a membership at Alexandria? 300. 300 a month, right? And some of them are $100 a month. This here, it's 75 bucks a month. You can get, you can meet with clients. You don't even need an office, but you could have some and then you could run a weekly meeting, which I'll talk about in a second, right? So, Ideally, you want to do it with one other person, right? It's tough to kind of be alone, but if you guys, you know, are with one other person, you get a little spot and you can kind of show up with somebody. And I would do, like, if, if I was, I would do that. Hey, man, I'm getting my own spot. Can you come and show up and kind of get, get on a schedule and get there every day? That's what I did. And we had to do a physical office, but now you can do a shared space. And then people can take ownership and they're excited. They want to come with you and maybe they want to contribute. And then, which we'll talk about, you should run a weekly meeting. Week night, right? I'm doing this right now. And we're doing it in Ashburn. And it's a lot different than here, <laughs> right? There's like seven, eight people, right? You know, I'm shouting at the meeting and Rod's like, <laughs> right here. <laughs> right? This is a lot different, but it's cool because it's like, all right, man, I'm back in. And, and you have a, a, a newfound, you know, I learned a lot when I moved out of my house. I had a newfound appreciation. And I, got, I learned a lot when I got married. And I had a newfound appreciation of my parents. And I... And then when I had a kid, I had a newfound appreciation because I had to learn, like, man, man, they went with this, they did this, they did, you know. So my son's a teenager, so man, he did, man, my dad had a real good temper. I thought it was bad. No, he's, he's good. <laughs> I, you just have a newfound appreciation, right? You guys, some of you guys take this for granted. And when you're on your own, and you see. So you run, a, and then, so after your weeknight meeting, right, what I would do if I was Shondell, if I was Jen, if I was some of the other people that are running these locations, I would have at least one weekly daytime op meeting. Learn how to run an op meeting. Weekly training and weekly op meeting. Can you run one? Can you get people there? Can you give a presentation, right? I, I was joking about, I was telling, I was, uh, Joking about Xander, I mean, he, you know, Val, I thought when you first started, you were bad. Xander has topped that. He's the worst of all time, the woke. 
right? The worst <laughs> op meeting of all time, right? And it's cool. I was joking, but you know, because he's so nervous, he didn't know what to say. His introduction, because I've made fun about for a long time about this, and about how they introduced me properly, right? Because she'd be like, hey, this is Shaq, you know? But Xander, you, which I didn't think this was possible, you understand less of what he says than Val. <laughs> I was like, this mumbling fool. Shaq. And he just runs out. <laughs> We did the op meeting. What time did we start? 9.36. He was done at 9.51. Oh my God. <laughs> but you're going to get better, man. And I mean it. I, you know, Samir, how bad he was? When he started? The worst. So I'm saying it, teasing, but you got to get up there and get on film, man. Yeah. And, and I think you should do it. I think you should run. So you can get good. So, you know, whatever uh, High's recruit said, hey, I, I got recruited because of Jet. Well, that's because you do an op meeting. I've done op for a long time, man, so I know how to read the crowd, I know how to make jokes, I know how to get intense, I know, you know when the group is good or not. That, it's very important, and I got a lot of confidence from doing that. You should run the meeting to see. And then, what I would do, Shondell, is run a, a weekly morning huddle. Just one time a week. This doesn't have to be a full-timer meeting. Hey, just let it. I don't have anybody show up. That's a problem. That's a problem. I want you to know, that's a problem, right? Here's my schedule right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, and, and a lot of you guys are doing this that I'm, I'm highlighting. So Saturday training, 9.30 to 11.30, right? Monday morning, 10 to 11.15. I know we're running a little long today. Um, Tuesday night, I'm in Ashburn with Rod and Sheila, right? And that is a new meeting. It's like us three and like seven, six or seven people. I mean, it's not, it's, 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 it's like, it's not, I don't even want to call it a meeting. It's like a group of individuals, like coincidentally there. It's, it's not a meeting, okay? It's not a meeting, right? But I'm learning, I'm learning about them, right? They're learning too. It's fun, right? Because they have a new respect for me. Like to, to put on the meetings, right? It does, they're seeing how hard it is. It's not easy to do this. This is builder shit. Yeah. I'm just saying, this. this is like tolerating, hurting people, inviting people, being consistent, all these things that we don't do because we do it for you. Right? Like, Rod, thank you, man. And I mean it. The office, great job. You know, but like, like his playlist is not a list, it's a song, just on repeat. <laughs> I get it, Rod. We love MJ. Okay? We can only listen to PYT so many times. PYT. And Rod's singing it. It's like, new song, just one more. Let's start with one, let's go to two. All right? I get it, dude. I get it. <laughs> I'm not staying facing him. I'm not yelling. This is me coaching him now, so I will know. Right? Just shuffle. I don't know. If you're right. Right? 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 Then I do a Wednesday noon not meeting. Right? We do the people that participate in the office here. And then Thursday, we have an office. like five or six people that come to our office on one Thursday. So if you're here, you want to come to the Thursday, and you're, you know, I'm just a part of my day shop, but even a third day, we just here to work, man. Here to not completely fall off the deep end. Right. Here to have another office day. It's not a crazy schedule. Right? I mean, you know, you want to make a million dollars a year. You want to become a master copy. You want to have 50 people showing up. I mean, you, you, I don't know what business you can have, right, where you, you do nothing, you never have a schedule, you sell it to people. They ain't going to show up. I just want you to understand that. They're not going to work. It's cool. You can get them to sign up, but they're not actually going to work. And we want a system where, you know, like, what's the word? It's like a, a culture of meetings. Not like, I, it's not death by meeting. I, we're not those guys. I just want you to understand that. And I've been that. Thousands of mistakes, like I said. We used to have meetings every day. But just so you know, just so you know, the number one hierarchy in the modern era, and, and maybe ever, 
How many days are they at the office? Mm. On meetings? Samir? Every day. Five days a week? Six. Six days a week. Different million dollar earner runs it, and they meet at the office every day. Mm. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you need to subscribe to a schedule if you want to get some freaking killers on your team. And if you do it, I'm telling you, you know, it's true. When you're at the office, good things happen, man. I'm, I'm seeing it with these guys, right? They're coming on Thursday, they're making calls, they're inviting people, they're recruiting people, they're just, you know, and we don't even have the office environment yet. It's coming. But this is very fundamental. Remember what I said about Bezos. I don't know what's gonna change in the next 10 years. I don't think about that. I think about what will remain true. Low prices. Selection, fulfillment, meetings will be here. There's something about the human interaction. There's something about this, that people come. And you know, I, I it was cool, man. And I just, I, and this is not, oh man, that was so long ago. No, 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 I just want you to understand. I, 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 for some reason I went down a rabbit hole, and I'll end with this where I was on our YouTube, the old YouTube channel, and it was 2000, I was sending pictures, right? Like, there was a picture of Tia with blonde hair. I don't know if you remember when Tia was blonde hair. Yeah, yeah, then Tia and Peter both had blonde hair. Right? Right? It was like, they were auditioning for Rush Hour 4. So, uh, they didn't get the part. But, um, so, but this is like 2018, 19, yeah. and Samir's up there training, and he's saying, he's calling out people, right? He's using the names. Hey, man, John, Sheila, you understand how many meetings it comes to that you that made you who you are. You can't circumvent that, man. Yeah. I was in there. Jen was in there. Chandel's in there. Right? I mean, all you. And that, that's okay. That's not like, oh, I'm being different. No, man. Like, I love it. That, I love saying these, these things about my track record for showing up. Because I understand what it takes to build a team and an army of people, right? So, you know, let's sell out to meeting attendance, man, and get your, you know, kind of get in the you know, You're in Gainesville now, right? I forgot about that, right? And what you, how much is your membership? Uh, it's just a uh, look like a membership. Yeah, it's like a hundred. Yeah, hundred bucks. I mean, I'm not saying you have to get an office, right? But maybe talk with somebody. If you guys are a little bit far, you're Springfield or Rockville or wherever, right? Get a little office. Get pay a hundred bucks. <coughs> Go meet with people, and you, you'll say stuff. Hey, I have an office. Can you come meet with me? Mm -hmm. Now, there, you can also get a dedicated office. Some of these guys, I know Rod has a dedicated office, and we can do a meeting once a week, and you know all this stuff. But this is. You gotta build this in your mind first, right? Mm -hmm. And this is one step closer. So, anyways, all right. So we're uh, we got Super Saturday um, on Saturday, and right after that we'll be going bowling. I think there's some bowlers in here, right? Are you a bowler? Okay. You a bowler? Yeah. You gotta qualify, all right? Um, Fifteen hundred get you there, and then so after Saturday we'll just go head over to Bolero, hit up the bowling. Are you a bowler? I feel like you. So like you can throw like a 12 back down and throw strikes. <laughs> um, but uh, and let's have a great march. Right? It's a big month for us. Let's go our meeting. Uh, anything you want to add? Anything you want to? Okay. All right. Team one, two, one, two, three.